Hello everybody, welcome to Web Young Cars. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you around this handsome beast, the 2023 BMW X1. Very kindly lent to me by BMW Australia for the week. So I've been driving this car for a whole week now. Um, so I've had enough time to find out some good and bad bits about the car. In this video, I'm going to be showing you around the exterior design, the interior, and also taking it for a drive as well. So let's get stuck into this. We'll start on the outside of the car, and then we'll work our way to the inside before we go out for a drive. So first of all, first question probably on your lips, the color is called Utah Orange. Not my personal choice, I don't mind this sort of color, um, but when you see the color interior they've combined it with, uh, then you might get where I'm coming from. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at the design of the front of the car. As you can see, BMW got this new sort of design language where the kidney grills are becoming sort of very um, sort of vertical, if you like, um, but also getting a little bit wider and a little bit taller. It's not quite as aggressive as something you find on like the new M3 or M4, uh, but it's definitely bigger than cars in the past. In terms of models, there's two engine choices to choose from. Uh, you've got the S Drive 18i. That's a front wheel drive, 1.5 three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine uh, with a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Uh, that engine develops 115 kilowatt and 230 newton meters of torque. You can also get the X Drive 20i. So that's a two litre engine, which has got 150 kilowatt and obviously four wheel drive. So if you do want something with a little bit more power, then the X Drive 20i is the model for you. Now in terms of pricing, this S Drive 18i starts at $53,900. If you want to get the X Drive 20i, that starts at $65,900. So there's quite a big jump between the front wheel drive and the four wheel drive version. So it's about $12,000. There is an enhancement package on this vehicle, which is just over $4,600. And it does give some really nice features. So for example, we get a choice of metallic paints. We also get the panoramic sunroof. And as we step inside, we'll see the Harman Kardon audio system. Uh, plus we get things like electric seats, sliding back seat, uh, and some more safety equipment as well. So as an actual package, it's really good value. Now, if you want the exterior M, M Sport package, you do have to go to the 20i model. So you're paying your $12,000 more to get the 20i model in the first place, then you've got to pay $3,000 to get the M Sport package. So in actual fact, if you're on an M Sport model, it's actually gonna cost you $15,000 more than this, which to me is an awful lot of money. It's a shame you can't get the M Sport package on the S-Drive version. In terms of the way they drive, as I said, we'll get into that when we go uh, out for a drive in the car itself. Depending on what sort of you know, reason you're buying this car for, if it's kind of like shorter journeys, and obviously a lot of people might use this as a, uh, a car to sort of get the kids to school and short journeys, that type of thing. This S-Drive 18i is absolutely perfect. But even out on the freeway, as we'll see when we go for a drive, it holds its own and copes really, really well. So we've got the BMW kidney grill that I mentioned a minute ago. The bottom of the front bumper has got this satin silver finish uh, and also in the corners there as well. There's actually proper gaps there for airflow to go through uh, the corner of the bumper as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, front sensors, front camera are standard. Sensors on the side for the active park assist. We've got the coloured wheel arches. So you get a nice sort of two-tone finish, particularly when you've got a brighter coloured car like this. Um, but it gives it like of a, a bit of a fake sort of off-road look. 19-inch alloy wheels are standard as well, which is good to see because it does fill the arches nicely, uh, which is nice. Satin silver door mirrors, again a nice, another nice design cue. Uh, and then also silver around the windows. The satin silver is also down the bottoms of the doors, uh, with also the grey finish that comes from the wheel arches, which is quite nice. The door handles are flush. That's a, a thing that BMW seem to be doing on a lot of their models at the minute. Um, it was in the 4 Series Grand Coupe that I had earlier in the year, uh, and also in the two, 2 Series Coupes I had, the 240i and the 230i. So this is obviously BMW's latest door handle, if you like. So the back of the car has had a bit of a refresh as well. Uh, we've got this rather sort of stylish LED rear lights here. Uh, the satin silver from the front and the side of the car continues around the back as well, uh, as does the coloured plastic sections that we had on the wheel arches and the side skirts. Um, when you come down to the bottom, there's no exhaust or even fake exhaust down the bottom here. Um, they're all hidden underneath the rear bumper um, just to give it a much cleaner design at the back. 
The tailgate is electric, as you'd expect. And it opens up to reveal a nice square boot size, which is 540 litres in capacity. If you fold the rear seats down, it extends to 1400 litres. So for a car that's not that big, it's actually got a really decent carrying capacity. Now there's a couple of neat tricks here in the boot. I'm going to show you um, how you can sort of create different amounts of space depending on you know, how many people in sit in the car or how much space you want for uh, carrying stuff basically. Um, so the rear shelf obviously comes out. We'll just disconnect that from either side and then we'll lift that straight out. Pop that, that down there a second. Um, now the boot floor uh, there's actually a hidey hole underneath this, so we can lift that up and then lift it up uh, to secure that in place. And then you've got a whole load more space there. Um, I'd say that's probably about another six inches deep in there, which is pretty cool. Um, you don't get a space saver square wheel or even a spare wheel with the X1 because it's on run flats. Um, downside to that is if you get a punch, you're stuffed, but it does give you a lot more boot space. Um, so like I say, that bit folds out of the way. Uh, so you can sort of carry taller items if you need to. Folds back down just as easy, and then you've got a nice flat load floor. With the rear seats, it's got what they call a 40-20-40 split. A lot of cars get a 40-60 split, so you've got sort of one-third, two-thirds. But with this design here, you can actually have the centre section folded down if you've got a longer item, and still have two rear passengers in the back. As part of the enhancement pack I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the middle row, uh, sorry, the second row of seats actually slides backwards and forwards as well. So it enables you to carry passengers, but also extend the boot space if you've got some bigger items that you need to carry. Right, so that's had a bit of a look at the outside um, and also a bit of a storage in the boot. The next thing we'll do is have a look inside the car. But before we get to that, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss any future videos coming for the rest of the year. So that said and done, let's jump inside and have a look around. Right, so let's jump inside then and have a look inside. Um, look how beautiful the weather is today, by the way. Uh, absolutely stunning, which makes a nice change considering the weather we've had recently. It's been pretty poor. Anyway, let's get inside. Um, so this is the inside of the new 2023 X1. The color of the seats is called Oyster. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, not really sure I'd have this interior with the orange exterior, um, but you know, everybody's different. And I think it would look really good with a darker colour, um, you know, sort of a dark blue or black or grey or something like that. Um, but these seats are so, so comfortable. Would have to be some of the best seats I've sat in this year, I reckon. Uh, they are absolutely superb. All this bolstering down here, uh, down the sides as well. The end section, like BMW often do in their cars, this actually extends out. So if you've got long legs, um, you can actually extend that out as well. We've got the buttons down here. Uh, these are obviously electric seats. We've got two position memory as well for the driver, which is really nice to see. Um, and so that's part of that enhancement package I mentioned earlier. Uh, we've then also got the fantastic Harman Kardon sound system. Now I can't really sort of like play music and you wouldn't really sort of be able to tell just from a video how good the sound system is in this car, but trust me, it is fantastic. Um, for such a small car, um, yeah, it, it blows my mind. The sound system is superb. Um, but other than that, we've got a sort of nice leather down here, some stitching, some nice plastics here on the top of the door, um, a button in there so you can operate your electric tailgate. Um, and then when we look at the rest of the design of the car, we've got a sort of fairly standard looking BMW steering wheel but the buttons are very different from what you might see on the previous model, um, sort of X1 or even a 3 Series or something like that. Then we get to the center console and you can see we've got this sort of floating design. So underneath, you can see just down here, there's a bit of storage, um, which is really fantastic because it means you can store bits and pieces down there. But then you sort of got this floating area under here and then you've got your gear selector and a couple of different buttons there. Um, so it's a very different design from what we had on the previous X1. Um, so let's jump in and have a look around uh, the inside of the car. So there you go, as you can see, it looks very, very nice in here. It does look sort of quite upmarket. And you say those two sort of big screens, you've got the instrument cluster there in front of the driver. And it's actually one piece of glass that goes all the way over to the infotainment display. So it's really, really impressive. 
as I said, so the steering wheel, uh, like I said, the buttons are quite different. Um, they do look a little bit different than something like, like I say, a 3 Series or previous Model X1. Um, what else have we got down here? Uh, we've got the wireless charging pad. You've got this little sort of flap here, so it doesn't matter what size your phone is. I need my glasses before they get broken. Um, yeah, you literally know, pop your phone in there, you shut the little flap, and that's your wireless charging pad, which is actually quite a cool idea. A couple of cup holders down here as well, which is nice. We've got a 12 volt socket there. And then we've also got two uh, fast chargers, so USB-C, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, we've got the engine stop start button, button you can turn uh, your cameras on and off and then your hazards. There's a little sort of scroll dial, which is the volume for your radio. Uh, and then you can use these arrows here to change other preset radio stations or tracks on your Spotify playlist or what have you. This is a little gear selector, um, which is becoming sort of quite fashionable. Uh, with a lot of sort of german brands now it literally just flicks backwards and forwards you've seen those in things like uh, volkswagen golf if you sat in one of those recently uh, they've got that as well uh, and then you've got a button there you can change your driving modes uh, and that one will adjust the distance for your adaptive cruise control uh, we've then got the park brake and the auto hold function uh, then we've got this button here as well so when we press that the armrest actually opens up. You've got a secret hidey hole in there, so you've got a little bit more storage, which is quite cool. Um, but let's have a look. Let's bring the car to life, uh, and I'll show you what's on the display. Uh, so we press the engine stop-start button just down here. So there you go. That brings the car to life. Uh, so in front of us there, we've got the digital display. Uh, let me just turn this fan down. Actually, this is... Um, I'm going to come back to this in a second. I'm going to show you a little bit more about this. Um, but climate menu, fan speed, let's turn that down a little bit. Uh, right, so anyway, yeah, this is the display in front of you for the driver. Um, you've got your speedo over this side. This one over here tells you how much power you're using, as opposed to having a rev counter, which is a little bit odd, but that's okay. Um, in the middle, you can configure what you see there. At the moment, I've got it on the trip meter. Um, I have to say, this car's actually quite economical. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, then you've got your usual sort of range in the tank and time and uh, traffic sign recognition, so that's all fairly standard stuff. Now with this infotainment system, I have a few bits and pieces. I, I like it overall, but there are a few bits and pieces uh, that I wished BMW hadn't changed quite so much. Now, if you've had a BMW in the past or you've been lucky enough to own one, across the middle here, BMW have these like one to eight buttons, they're shortcut buttons. And they've done away with them in the new X1, which is a real shame. Because all this system now is touchscreen, whereas before you have like your, your little wheel here and your buttons to operate the screen. So I've actually done away with that, so everything is touchscreen. And everything you want to find is buried somewhere deep in a menu. Give you an example. I don't like the stop-start system on cars. I'm just not a fan of it. If you want to turn it off, You've got to press the home button to take you back to that screen there. You've then got to swipe across to go to your picture of your car. Then you've got to go to vehicle apps. Then you've got to go to driving settings. Then you've got to go drive train and chassis. And then you find your start start system. And then you press that one and it turns it off. So you've got to go through all those steps just to turn off the stop start system. When previously you'd have a button around here somewhere you could literally just press and it would deactivate the stop start system. So to me, that's quite annoying. But if BMW still had the one to eight buttons across here for shortcuts, what you'd be able to do is save this as a shortcut. So when you get in the car every time, you'd be able to press your shortcut button, bring up this menu, and then just press the button there to deactivate it. Um, so those two bits together are actually quite annoying. Right, now that's that, but what if you wanted to change the speaker settings, so like your music, your bass, your treble or whatever. To get into that menu, you can actually press the little music note here at the top of the screen. Then you press your media and radio settings. Then you press sound. And there you go, then you've got your bass, your treble, balance and fade, etc. But again, if I had the shortcut buttons across here on the top of the dash, you could actually store that um, sort of menu on one of your presets. So again, they've kind of done away with this whole you know, they're trying to get a minimalist look, which I don't mind. Um, I like the dash and how it looks. But even if they had like capacitive buttons across the top here for your one to eight pre and favorite buttons, I'd, I'd be okay with that. 
because every time you want to go in and change something you've got to dig deep through the menus and um yeah it takes forever to find stuff anyway rant over um the actual system itself is really good uh, i do like it you've got this nice big screen it's really easy to use you just swipe across it's a bit like using your phone um and it's nice and clear um it's actually easy to use but like i say everything's just buried deep somewhere uh, you've got to find stuff and if you want to use the air conditioning uh, you've got your two temperatures here because it's got dual zone climate control obviously so it's fairly easy to adjust the temperature um, but you'd have to go into your climate menu so then look at other bits and pieces now in terms of driving position um, as i said earlier these sports seats are so comfortable um, got to be one of the best seats i've sat in for a very very long time um, driving position is good but when you sit in it it feels like the steering wheel is slightly offset i don't know whether the, the steering wheel is actually slightly offset because it feels like it's more to the right hand side or whether it's just some sort of optical illusion because the digital display in front of the driver doesn't sort of come all the way over to be in line with the steering wheel um, which when you're looking down heavy ahead of you yeah it just feels like the steering wheel is slightly sort of right um, although it, it probably isn't it just feels that way it's, it's kind of odd um, but other than that like i say visibility out the front is fantastic um, decent size windows out the size decent size um, door mirrors um, we've got a blind spot monitor as well as you'd expect um, so yeah visibility is very very good i do like having the sunroof uh, which is part of that pack i mentioned at the beginning of the video um, because it lets heaps of light in You've obviously got the electric blind as well um, to keep out the heat on a hot day like today. Um, but yeah, as a general place to be, the interior is fantastic. It's really, really nice. Um, so I've now set up my seat uh, for how I drive the car. So let's go and have a look in the back and see how much leg space and room is back there. So as you can see there, getting into the back of the X1 is really, really simple. Uh, the doors open nice and wide, and I've got loads of space here in the back, plenty of uh, room to stretch my legs out, and you can even get your feet all the way under the front um, driver's seat as well. Um, so you can stretch your legs out, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, for a car that is um, only sort of four and a half meters long, the packaging inside is absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, plenty of space. Um, even plenty of headspace as well, despite the fact, uh, obviously you lose a little bit because of the sunroof. Um, it does help the fact that I'm not particularly tall. Um, but anyway, yeah, plenty of space in the back here. Um, air vents in the middle of the center console as well, uh, along with two further USB-C charging points. As I mentioned when we were looking in the boot earlier, the middle row actually slides backwards and forwards. There's a lever just underneath, so you can actually very easily move the seat backwards and forwards. Um, to create some more boot space the back of the seat also adjusts as well so you can adjust the angle of the backrest there's a little loop just down here so we can adjust that as well so again it's good that you can either create some more space in the back of the car um, or if the rear passenger just wants to sort of maybe relax a bit you can sort of lean back further and you can have a little sleep if you really want now some other bits and pieces we've got back here we've got the traditional uh, armrest flip that down we've got a couple of cup holders as well if you're going to be putting child seats in the back uh, the outer two seats have got the isofix mounting points as well for your baby seats um, so that's really good to see as well um, i mentioned earlier also that the seats are 40 20 40 split so down here we've got a little loop and we pull that and in the middle section of the seat will actually come forward and it folds down again similar to an armrest but it just means you can get longer objects through from the boot, but still carry two passengers in the back, uh, which is really, really handy. In terms of storage for passengers in the back, um, there's a little sort of map neck pocket on the back of uh, each of the seats. Uh, there's some decent sized sort of bottle holders in the uh, door pockets as well. Um, so people in the back are really well catered for. Um, you don't sort of feel like you're squashed and claustrophobic and um, yeah, you'd be happy to spend a couple of hours back here on a long journey. Um, visibility is also good in the back. Uh, pretty decent sized side windows. Again, the sunroof helps all the light coming in. Uh, and the view out the front is pretty good as well. Uh, so sitting in the back, you don't feel like a second class passenger. 
Right, let's go for a drive and then see how this X1 performs on the road. First observations when you when you start driving, um, you can hear the sort of typical sort of three cylinder noise coming from the engine, which is absolutely fine. Uh, it's relatively quiet. It's very refined, which is good. Uh, the seven speed dual clutch gearbox works really well. And you, you get the impression you're not in a big car, although it's kind of slightly bigger than its predecessor. Um, yeah, you, you don't feel like you're in a really big car, but there's plenty of space inside. It does feel sort of light and airy in here. Um, your view ahead of the road is really, really good. Steering is nicely weighted. It's a little bit lighter than I'd probably like, um, but you still know that when you turn the steering wheel, what's happening um, sort of beneath with the, with the front wheels. Acceleration is pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad for a little 1.5 turbo three cylinder engine. Um, if you want the extra performance, then obviously you'd go for the two litre. But if it's mainly gonna be used for, you know, pottering around town, taking kids to school, popping into the shops, that sort of thing, um, the 1.5 actually does a really good job for a car of this size. You'd have to sort of really justify it to yourself to spend that extra money which as I mentioned at the beginning of the video is quite a lot to justify getting the two litre four wheel drive version. In terms of running costs, they're not too bad actually. Servicing is every 12 months or 20,000 kilometers and you can actually pay for that up front. You can get a five year basic plan for $1,800, which isn't too bad um, because normally BMW or other German brands are notoriously expensive for their servicing costs. From November the 1st, all new BMWs now come with a five-year warranty. Uh, so I actually managed to play catch up with everybody else. Um, so they're pretty much the last manufacturer to make a five-year warranty standard. So yeah, it's from November the 1st, but it's also retrospect back to October the 1st. Um, so yeah, if you had a car from October the 1st, you'll get a five-year warranty. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, and I've often said it in my videos when I've reviewed BMWs that, you know, why can't they offer a five-year warranty? But complain no more. They've done it at last. You now get a five-year warranty with every new BMW. The rest of your running costs aren't too bad either. Um, servicing's every 12 months or 20,000 kilometers with the X1. And you can actually buy uh, a service plan up front. So what they call a basic service plan, which will cover you up to five years, is $1,800. So it's actually pretty respectable because um, normally your German brands are, are quite well known uh, for having very expensive servicing bills. In terms of ride quality, it's actually really good. Considering we've got 19 inch wheels and run flat tires, uh, it's actually not too bumpy in here. You get a little bit of road noise depending on the road surface, but then you know, you've got 19 inch wheels and tires, what do you expect? Um, but yeah, generally uh, to, to drive along, absolutely fine. Uh, it's a really, really nice place to be. It's a nice car to drive. Um, and it's a good car for passengers as well, whether it's in the front or the back. The fact that you can get this from I'm going to say 53,900 plus on roads for the base model. If you add on the enhancement pack, which is just over $4,600, you're probably going to be looking at sort of know, probably $63,000, $64,000 drive away, which for a BMW with all the tech that you get, I think it's pretty good. Um, I'd hesitate to go to the you know the XDrive 20i model with the M Sport pack because you, you're then well into sort of $70,000 plus. Um, so yeah, it's a big ask if you want that sort of extra power from the engine in the M Sport pack. For such a big car as well, fuel economy is actually really good. Um, I did a trip today which was, well I've done 260 kilometres today, I've done a fair bit of driving. Uh, a lot of it was on the freeway to be fair. Um, but for the whole of that 260 kilometres, my average is 5.7 litres per hundred. Which for a petrol powered SUV is phenomenal. Um, you'd never expect to get that. That's, that's diesel sort of figures. Um, you know, if you had a two litre turbo diesel and got 5.7 in your SUV, you'd be quite happy with that. Um, but to get 5.7 out of a petrol engine, that's pretty impressive. So apart from those sort of couple of quirky bits that I mentioned with the infotainment system and having no physical shortcut buttons on the dash, there's really not much I don't like about this car. Um, I'm going to say I've had a great week driving it, really enjoyed it. Um, it's been a lovely sort of place to spend time and uh, you know, get to find out what the new X1's about. 
So if I was buying an X1 myself, what would I get? I probably would get the X Drive 20 i just because I want a little bit more power. Uh, I'd also want the M Sport package as well because I like the exterior design. Um, in terms of colour, maybe a dark grey. I like this sort of oyster colour interior, that's really smart. Uh, maybe a dark blue, that would look quite smart. Um, yeah, dark grey, dark blue, M Sport, X Drive 20i. Definitely get the enhancement packs, you get the sunroof. Uh, the Harman Kardon sound system would be an absolute must for me. Um, that's how I'd probably spec my X1, I reckon. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What would you get? Would you get the S Drive 18i like I'm driving today? What colour would you get? Would you go for the orange? Possibly not, because it's a bit bright. Um, or would you spend a little bit more, get the X Drive, get the 2 litre four cylinder engine? Um, would you get the M Sport pack? Um, yeah, put it in the comments below. Let me know what you choose. Um, be interested to know what people would go for if they were going to get an X1 too. So that brings us to an end to the video of the 2023 BMW X1. Um, I've had a thoroughly enjoyable week driving the car. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section for me below and I'll answer them as soon as I can for you. Um, don't forget to like the video, also subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and in that way you'll find out every time a new car review goes live. Um, so that just leaves me to say thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.